Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it was a you know, it was not a very good Saints team, and um, you know, you kind of have kind of have to take that into account to some degree. But that's who the Eagles had to play. I mean, it wasn't like they could go out and beat the Packers on Sunday. They they weren't scheduled to play the Packers or you know the Patriots or somebody like that. They had the Saints and they they handled it um, you know about as uh, decisively as you could. And um, you know, to me, it was not a game that that you know tells you they're on the right track or uh, you know makes us a great season. But by winning it and handling it the way they did, they put themselves. Uh, in the best possible position to, you know, now go play a Monday night game against a division rival uh, that's leading the NFC East. Um, you know, they have that little, little bounce in their step that you get after a win. Um, again, not the most impressive victory of Chip Kelly's uh, you know, tenure so far, but uh, an important one because of what it sets up for the Eagles. That, uh, you know, it showed a little bit of, like I said, there were some changes there. Kelly made some changes, got some things going. Um, you know, we've seen him be a little bit stubborn about that uh, in the past to some degree. In this case, um, you know, what he did seemed to work. The offensive line, which is so important to this team, being able to function at a high level, um, you know, probably played its best game of the year. And uh, that, that was also very encouraging because if, if the line gets going and everything's right with them, then everything else sort of falls into place behind it. Phil, I know this is a tough answer to give me after five weeks, but if I were to ask you today, if you thought Sam Bradford would be the quarterback for this team next year, what would you say? Sure. That is a tough question, and uh, it is a tough situation. I mean, you know, it's very fortunate for the Eagles, I think, that they did not um, commit some long-term thing. Uh, there was some talk between uh, Bradford's camp and the Eagles uh, after the after the trade, um, you know, about like a contract extension. Um, the Eagles are probably glad they did not do that at this point. Um, that they'd be completely locked into Bradford uh, without you know, seeing the rest of the year unfold. Uh, they might not be that happy about that. Uh, on the other hand, I think there are signs from Bradford that it's coming together for him. Um, he has had ups and downs, but you know, he, he really did miss a lot of time. And uh, you know, the more I look at it, we always look at uh, you know, his, his staff. And that was not the case for the first five years of career. I mean, he just didn't do that. He was very consistent. Um, he was almost exactly the same back in terms of his quarterback rating, uh, percentages, uh, you know, pass completion percentage. Uh, it was just, you know, the guy was very consistent. It wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't great numbers, but they were consistent numbers. And I just think that that tells you a little bit about what he's going through in terms of the guy coming back. Uh, he's getting used to playing again in an entirely unfamiliar and different offense. And uh, I think that's all in there. So there's hope that he can get it all together. And by the end of the season, the Eagles should know for sure what they have uh, with Sam Bradford. And at that point, they can make a decision. But uh, at this point, if I was, you know, based on what I know now, I would say that it's probably um, it's probably a long shot that they can get to him for a long, uh, lengthy uh, period of time. And I don't know why his agent or, or Bradford would want to do anything less uh, than a market uh fair uh, long-term deal so um, you know I think there's a very good chance that there's another quarterback here uh, next year but having said that that's based on what we've seen so far um, you know there's 11 uh, football games for Bradford to, to make the case for himself that he is a franchise type quarterback and uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't write him off because I do think you've seen enough of the, of the talent and the you know the ability um, it's there um, if it's not there and you don't or you don't see it, then that that's that's really a bad thing. You know, if you're trying to you know, look at a guy as a possible franchise quarterback, it is there. If you can get it and be consistent with it um, and get it and bring it out, uh, you know, every week, then you have a guy that you can you can build around. But uh, at this point, I haven't seen it to that degree, and I would be very hard pressed to think Chip Kelly wants to commit to a guy like that for the long term. Now, the other problem for Kelly, of course, is he'll be then going into his fourth season. And not knowing who his quarterback is, um, that's not a good situation to be in either. So it's a it's it's, it's, a, it's a case where I think everybody's got to be hoping, uh, everybody involved here has got to be hoping that Sam Bradford, you know, turns it around and gets to be the guy that they thought they were getting when they traded for him. Phil Sheridan with us, ESPN.com, NFL Nation. Yeah, I mean, at that point, 
The only question I would really have, and I don't really know the answer either, much like you, Ed, but we're gonna, I think it's still evolving, but what are the alternatives? I mean, where do you go if he's not the guy? You're back to square one. Are you drafting a guy? You're going back to free agency. I mean, I think that is where they're really stuck between a rock and a hard place. This almost has to work out for them, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, you're right. You're going to be one of those teams that's signing Ryan Fitzpatrick and Matt Castle every year. You know, um, you know there are a bunch of guys out there. Um, you know, who float around from place to place. They play just, you know, quarterback just well enough to, to stay employed, get jobs around the league, um, and never well enough to hold those jobs or take a team anywhere. Um, you know, that's the, the kind of cycle you get into. You know, there's there's going to be speculation about people like uh, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, if, his, if his time is up in San Francisco, uh, Robert Griffin the third situation has got to lead to somewhere, you know, some kind of change in Washington at some point. But, you know, at that point you'd be looking at a situation kind of like they got into with Bradford. Here's a guy that, you know, another team invested a lot in uh, in terms of money and in, ter- in terms of draft pick, uh, a high draft pick. You know, that's a, a huge investment for a team. They've kind of given up on them. You now you're trying to bring them back and get them going. Uh, to what everybody thought was his initial uh, p- potential. So there are going to be a couple of guys like that around. Um, getting one of those, um, you know, getting into a situation where you're doing that every year, you know, until you find the right guy. Uh, I don't think that's a winning formula uh, for the long term either. So um, that's why I think, you know, right now it doesn't look like a, a situation um, where they, you know, want to commit for the long term, uh, you know, at this moment. But uh, they fortunately have 11 more games get to see where Sam Bradford goes there, how he evolves, what he becomes, and uh, and at that point they can make a decision. They will always have the ability, uh, because of the franchise tag, to make that decision. I mean, they you know, they can control his rights beyond uh, his contract expiring if they want to. So um, it will be their call, ultimately, whether Sam Bradford is back next year. And again, what they have to hope for is that you know, uh, he does enough on the field. You know, if he lose this team back in the NFC East race and they win the division and go to the playoffs, um, at that point, you'd have a pretty good feeling about him. And I would imagine at that point, then the Eagles would do whatever it took to get him back. Phil, yeah, and, you know, some would say, look, the guy had 50 games. We saw enough of him in St. Louis to see what he is. Uh, If you're watching him now and you see a guy that in the second half has been very good, in the first half of games he struggled, it seems like, you know, some would say, well, you, you can expect that. He hasn't played in two years. At what point... Do you stop saying, well, he's played five games, I need to see more? You know, um, where does the evaluation begin to say, all right, this is the guy and who he is? Yeah, I think that's probably the the, the more worrisome thing of all of this with, with Bradford is that, you know, that's what he was, basically. I mean, the guy you're seeing right now on the field uh, with the Eagles is essentially the guy that he was before the knee injuries in St. Louis. So that may just be who he is, and, and that might be what the ceiling is for Sam Bradford. Um, that would be, you know, uh, <laughs> an unfortunate turn of events for an Eagles franchise that is, you know, basically trying to find that quarterback. Um, for you know, They've been trying since Donovan McNabb got traded uh, to Washington. They have not had a franchise quarterback here. Uh, you know, Kevin Cobb was not a franchise quarterback. Michael Vick um, had been one and had some of the uh, – the qualities you look for in a franchise quarterback, but he really never was that guy in Philadelphia. Um, Nick Foles was not a franchise quarterback. So, you know, you're on, you know, going on like your fourth quarterback here um, since the McNabb uh, era ended. And, um, you know, none of those guys has been that kind of guy. I mean, obviously Mark Sanchez played half of last year. Also a guy, you know, another one of those guys that had been somebody else's franchise quarterback, but hadn't really you know, to come on here, um, you know, you can get into that cycle. And that's, you know, unless you are willing to go out and say, all right, we're going to, you know, go to and, and 14 in the season, you know, strip it down and start building it up again from the, from the bottom and be able to draft a quarterback first or second pick in the draft, unless you're willing to go through all that. And Duke Kelly is not the guy who appears interested in going through that kind of a process. Um, he has really avoided that uh, as best he can. Uh, for the first couple of years here. So um, unless you're willing to do that, you're always going to be, you know, at the mercy of what the market is. And, again, that's where you get the Matt Castle, Ryan Fitzpatrick, yeah. you know, series of guys that are, you know, again, 
Don't send us down that road, Phil. Don't send us down that road, please. Yeah, that's, that's a scary <laughs> place to be. And you see the teams that are there. I mean, you look at like the Houston Texans, for example. You know, Bill O'Brien's good coach. Everybody knows that he's a good coach. Good football man. But they're on this cycle of, you know, whatever one of those guys they throw out there as a quarterback, it just doesn't matter. Like, as long as they get you going through that sort of cycle, um, you're not really going anywhere. And uh, they know it. So everybody knows it in place of, uh, you know, the, the Buffalo Bills are in a situation like that. You know, Tyrod Taylor may end up being a guy uh, who's, who knows more, but, you know, it's hard to, hard to really picture. So, yeah, right now, it's Sam Bradford is the guy that the Eagles, you know, and then Philly flat out said that. You know, when he was talking to the owners' meetings, when he really, you know, kind of opened up and talked about the decision to trade Nick Foles for Bradford, I mean, he basically said, you know, you have to find a way to get that quarterback. Uh, and the NFL, you're either going to draft him or you're going to find a guy who's got, you know, an injury or some other problem. The way the Saints got Drew Brees, that was the model. Um, you know, they got a Super Bowl victory out of that. Um, took a couple of years, but they got it. And they've had, they've had, you know, they've been a respectable franchise ever since they got Drew Brees. Um, you know, Bradford has not shown quite yet that he's Drew Brees, but you know, it's early, and uh, you know, it would, it would have been a nicer situation if they, you know, got a guy with three years left on his contract or that kind of thing. The one year left on his deal kind of, you know, um, heightens the urgency for everybody on this, but. Uh, that's the reality that they face. And, uh, and again, we're, you know, basically a third of the way through the season. Um, I thought probably Sunday was a set for the interceptions, which were not very uh, encouraging. Other than those two plays, um, you know, probably his best overall performance. So if he's trending in that direction, at least, you can at least see the possibility that he could become the quarterback again. Uh, Phil, then let me put this connection and see uh, what you think about it. Obviously, he hasn't been able to find the quarterback. If he doesn't like Bradford, that would be his fifth quarterback, Vic Foles, Barkley, Sanchez, Bradford. If he says, I can't find my quarterback, is that the way he gets out of here? I mean, I think that's, that is a, a plausible scenario. I mean, I you know I don't think that Chip Kelly um, you know, is – you know, yearning for the college game again. I mean, I don't think that's really how his mind works. You know, no one knows for sure with him because he's not a guy that, you know, he, he doesn't open up very much. and He doesn't, you know, he doesn't confide in anybody that I'm aware of. You know, whenever there's any kind of report about what Kelly might do or what he might be thinking or what might be going on with him, it's always, you know, very speculative. You never see or hear anything that comes right from Kelly or his camp. Uh, his agent doesn't talk about him to other people. Uh, which I'm sure is Chip's preference. You know, when Andy Reid was here, um, his agent Bob Lamont, um, you know, he would he would be a guy that would call you up if you were covering the team. So you get a call from Lamont. You know, something's going wrong with the team. Uh, people were blaming Andy. You know, Bob Lamont would call up and say, "Hey, you know, here's some here's some something to try to spin you on what was going on and and uh, defend Andy." I mean, that was you know, he was a very hands-on kind of guy about that stuff. So Chip's very private and very he takes things personally. But you know the one thing I could see happening is if he gets to that point and he, and he realizes he's not going to be able to you know get his quarterback the quarterback that he needs in the NFL, then yeah he's, that's going to be the escape pass for him. He's not you know he can't go you know he can't get the Eagles to trade him to you know to Tennessee so he can go coach Marcus Mariota. Uh, that's not going to happen. But he could always go back to the college game and. One of the things that he has in his favor right now is, uh, you know, every time one of these big college jobs opens up, you know, whether it's uh, USC or Texas, South Carolina, wherever the speculation might be, um, he is probably the most high profile available in terms of the college game he's available. Now, he's, uh, he's under contract here, but, you know, when they say, you know, Chip Kelly is, is going to be a candidate for this job or that job, you know, in, in terms of, of the college game, he is out there and he's a guy that somebody could decide could turn their program around and someone will throw a ton of money at him and if he's feeling like it's not going to happen for him in the NFL it's not going to get a quarterback he needs then yeah I see that that would be his way out um, you know I don't think it's imminent I don't think he's looking at it that way he's done a lot here um, he's made a lot of changes he's got rid of some very good players um, it would not be a very high character thing to do <laughs> I think if you're Chip Kelly to walk away from this situation here. Uh, this is the team that he has pretty much handpicked. He's got some uh, responsibility to the players he's brought here and to the team that he brought them to. 
into the city that, that this team uh, represents. Um, he's got some accountability to all of those parties to uh, stick this out and, and, and you know and see it through. And I think he feels that way. I, don't, I you know every everything you hear from him suggests that he gets that, understands that you know. And I think he likes it. I think he thinks this is the, you know this is the you know the highest level of football there is. Um, winning you know if you can win a Super Bowl in Philadelphia, I mean in terms of football accomplishments, you probably can't get much higher. You know winning a national championship at USC would not be as impressive as winning a Super Bowl in Philadelphia, a city that hasn't won a championship since 1960. Uh, he knows all that stuff, and I think that he is intrigued and challenged by what it would take to win here. I asked a question to our listeners earlier, Phil. If I told you Chip Kelly will win a championship, will it be a Super Bowl championship or a college national championship? Yeah, I, I mean, if I had put money down on one of those right now, I would, pro- I would probably say a college national championship because – um, you know, you know, no one's won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia. It's been a long time. You have to have the 50th Super Bowl, and no one's ever won one in Philadelphia. So that suggests that there's a uh, you know a pretty sharp curve against the likelihood of that happening uh, anytime real soon because it just hasn't happened. So um, you know, based on that and the fact that you know uh, a high pro- uh, you know high uh, profile college program would snap chip up if he decided that was the way he wanted to go. Um, you know, he's not going to go back to, you know, some community college somewhere and work his way up again. If he decides to go back to college, it's going to be somewhere like USC or Texas where he's going to have all the resources and uh, where you can go win a national championship, uh, you know, the first year or the second year. It's not, you know, it's the college game is different from the NFL. You know, I mean, Bill Belichick has basically been the dominant coach in the NFL for, you know, a decade and a half. Um, you know, there's a couple guys who have come and gone along the way and won, and won championships. There's some, there's some good programs out there. But, you know, in the college game, um, you know, it's possible to put a team together and go out and win. And I think that's one of the things that Chip would, would, would like about that. I mean, that's one of the things that might weigh on his mind is, hey, I can go into a college program and, uh, you know, if I don't have a quarterback today, you know, next year there's going to be a whole other crowd of quarterbacks coming up. And you, you don't have to draft them. You have to recruit them. It's a whole different world. And you can get, you know, a guy and, and build around them and, and, and win almost right away. So, you know, I think that that's more likely in terms of, you know, if he's going to do it, he's more likely to win at the college level quickly than he is to, to win here because no one's won here. And uh, if Sarah Bradford was 5-0 and and looking like Aaron Rodgers like he did in the, in the summer, I might feel differently about that. But if you're not, you're not sure who your quarterback's going to be, um, and you're not sure down the line, you know, who you're building around. It's really hard to uh, project yourself as a championship caliber team in the NFL. All right, uh, more from Phil Sheridan over at ESPN.com, NFL Nation, uh, where they've got plenty more on the Eagles and the Giants. Of course, a lot surrounding Sam Bradford and, of course, Chip Kelly as uh, – as the Eagles turn each and every Wednesday, it seems like, Phil, here on the Sports Bash, a Wednesday with Phil Sheridan. Thanks, Phil. Enjoyed it, Mike. Thank you.